Tony, it's been a, a while since we've talked to you. Um, a lot's been happening uh, with the, the youth development set up. Um, can you tell us a wee bit about what's been going on recently? Yeah, so as you say, there's been a, a lot happening over the last uh, number of weeks. Um, obviously, we just announced at the tail end of last week that we have signed four academy graduates onto modern apprenticeships, which is obviously a really um, important time of the year for us and we're delighted that we've managed to get um, the funding in place for four players to go and sign two-year contracts on modern apprenticeships um, and really that, that that's due to a couple of fundraisers that we've, we've had this year. So we had the um, annual Speakers Day um, at the Enshira Hotel, which was a great night, a huge turnout, which was absolutely terrific. And then there was the golf day as well. So those two fundraisers combined have basically allowed us to um, get these four modern apprentices in the in the door. So they are really looking forward to starting pre-season training back with the first team um, in the middle of June. Can you tell us a bit about uh, the four players that have, have signed on uh, under a modern apprenticeship? Um, some people will know, obviously, Scott Hanneman. Uh, he was uh, on loan at um, East Stirlingshire. Uh, and Logan Sinclair obviously came on made his debut in the last game of the season against Peterhead. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about uh, them and, and the other two that yeah. people might not know so much about? So I'll, I'll work my way back. So if we start with Owen, Hay- Owen Hayward, um, Owen's a 17-year-old goalkeeper that we brought to the club from Newton Grange Star towards the tail end of last year around about November time and we brought Owen and Owen had previously been in the academy at Hibs so um, the IETs came in done really really well and uh, thoroughly deserves this this opportunity um, Logan Sinclair is a left sided centre half as you say he made his first team debut up at Peterhead I think he got about 25 to 30 minutes he was um, absolutely terrific that day um, delighted that he managed to make his debut we signed him from Craig Royston again he was another one that um, prior to that had previously um, been in the academy at Hibs as well um, so um, looking forward to seeing how he progresses. Um, we've then got Rhys Walker, who is a wide attacking player. Uh, he's again signed for the academy last summer. Uh, he'd previously been at, at Dundee United. He's a graduate uh, Graham High, the Scottish FA's performance school in Falkirk as well. So it's great that we've we've got a player who's come through um, that system as well into the academy. And then you mentioned Scott Honeyman. Scott's been on loan with East Stirling in the Lowland League. Uh, he'd done really, really well. I um, mean, he played in the Lowland League first half of the season. He was 16, you know, and getting a regular game. He's buffed his run about December. So he's then, you know, he's played the second half of the season as a 17-year-old again. So he's played a full, a full season in the Lowland League, and he's done, he's done really well. Um, and because of his performances there, he thoroughly deserves his opportunity as well. And how important is it to get these these lads signed up? You know, it's obviously been a while since we've had players in in a modern apprenticeship. It just shows how successful that the, acad- the, the kind of rebuild to the academy is going so far. Yeah, I think I've said in previous interviews. You know, there's nothing better f- um, for the supporters to see homegrown players playing in the first team. I, I just think it gives everything a lift. It, you know, it gives the the fan base a lift. It creates a buzz, and you know they want to see one of their own doing well. And, this is really the first stage of that. The the four lads that we've mentioned um, joined Pierce Carroll, who got a modern apprenticeship last year, so he's in his second year of his apprenticeship now. So that gives us five. Um, they will train with the first team every day, Monday to, Monday to Friday, um, and it's a real a real opportunity for them. The difference here for us is that that will hopefully accelerate their development and that they're getting to train with the first team. So they're, they're training with seasoned pros when they're 16, 17, you know, turning 18, which we hope will really accelerate their development. You know, it's not like they're going to play full-time as an under-18 player um, with guys their own age. You know, they'll be training with first-team players, which we think, as I say, will accelerate their development, hopefully. And also a wee bit of motivation for the players currently in the the under-16s to the under-18s, showing that there is that that pathway to the the first team. So what it does do is it gives the the next batch of players in the academy, as you say, the motivation that there is a pathway at the club. But what it also does is help us with recruitment. If, you know, the next batch of players due to come into the club, we can show that there is now a clear pathway in place for them and, and that 
um, Falkirk as a club are, are determined to get youth development right and, and determined to try and get them through into the first team. The four or five lads, including Pierce, they all understand how difficult it's going to be and it's a huge jump, an absolutely massive jump to go for under-18 football or even out on loan at you know, East Stirling and Scott's done to then go and play in Falkirk's first team is, a, is an absolutely huge jump and they understand you know, the journey that's ahead of them and it's not going to be easy, you know. Um, this is just the first step on the ladder for them. You know they've got one foot in the door to being a professional football player. There's a long, long, long way to go before they can, you know, call themselves that. Looking at the the under 16s through to the under 18s, um, the under 18 season will be finished, and the under 16s still got uh, a little way to go. Um, how? Is that looking in terms of now getting new players in um, at the bottom uh, and, and looking forward to the next steps after that? Yep, so as you say, the under-18 season has literally just finished at the weekend there. So they're still in this week for a, a couple of things. Um, they're getting their end-of-season reviews with the coaching staff and then they'll have a meeting uh, on Thursday night to talk through what next season looks like for them and also what their closed season plan looks like. You know, So they'll have four or five weeks off but we expect them to um, look after themselves in that time so we'll give them a plan for that and the under 16s have still got three or four games left they don't finish till I think their last game is about the 18th of June um, so um, the two teams are kind of out of sync with their seasons at the moment if that makes sense and that one's finishing one's still got four or five weeks to go once the 16s finish they'll go through the same processes um, the 18s and that they'll have their reviews and they'll get their close season plan um, ready to come back for pre-season just lastly, uh, Tony as well, uh, wanted to ask about the, the reserve team um, and how that's looking going ahead as well. Yeah, so as I, as I touched on earlier, it's a huge jump to go from being an under-18 player right into the first team at Falkirk in you know, League One and you know, hopefully beyond that in the in the future. It's a massive, massive jump. Even going out on loan to the Lowland League to then go and play in our, our, our first team is a huge jump. So we need to, we need to find a way to bridge that gap to aid the players' development. So, as I say, we've got the the five modern apprentices and, and we need to find a way to bridge the gap between under-18 football and first-team football. So, we've entered a team into the SPFL Reserve League next season. Now, when I say a team, it's not an extra team. Um, the reserve fixtures will be played by first-team players that need minutes. So... If you think the manager can only pick 11 players to play on a Saturday, you can only make a maximum of five substitutes. So there are going to be a number of players in his first team squad, whatever size that is, that are going to need minutes from week to week. There's going to be players returning from injury that are going to need minutes. If you take Paul Watson as an example, if we'd had a reserve team last year that you know maybe Paul could have played four or five games when he was fit, that maybe gives them a chance to, to, take, to take part at the end of the season. So from a first team point of view, there's benefit in that it gives players match practice it keeps them sharp in terms of playing games you can do all the training you want but you know games give you give you match sharpness and then we've got the modern apprentices it'll allow them to go and play with senior players so they can learn from those senior players that they're playing with other teams will be the same with their reserve team there'll be senior players playing in their reserve team so you get the benefit as a young player of training with the first team playing with some of the first team players in reserve games and playing against first team players so that's only going to aid their development as well and then what will also allow us to do um, if the opportunity arises is look at some of the new under 18s and give them potentially the opportunity to experience some reserve games as well so it's not a new team it's an extra set of fixtures you're probably looking at somewhere in the region of between 15 and 20 games that um, will be played for the reserves next season so it allows us to bridge that gap between the academy and the first team but it always allows us to give first team players the opportunity to stay match sharp and match fit and allow players that are coming back from injury to get up to speed so that they're ready for when the first team manager chooses to select them so some exciting things happening you know there's lots of so it's such an exciting time for uh, for the academy with, with reserve teams happening four boys um getting modern apprentices and recruitment for new teams coming through and you know what what these modern apprentices does do is allow us to show players that aren't even in the building yet you know that haven't even come into the academy yet because they're too young that when we're having conversations to try and entice them um, to come to Falkirk rather than another academy for example that you know we can demonstrate there is now a, a clear pathway for them 
Well, Tony, I'm sure we're all looking forward to seeing these new players coming up. Um, thank you for the update and uh, catch up with you soon. Thanks very much. Cheers.